Hi, everyone. As Lucas said, my name is Francis, and I am the head of language operations here at Supertext. Um, also, like he said, I've been here for over six years, which means I've seen a lot, and I mean a lot, of questions and emails from freelancers. And as someone who's worked as a freelancer myself, I definitely understand the confusing aspects of navigating a relationship with an agency. So I put together this presentation to portray different parts of a collaboration with Supertext from both the freelancer perspective and the Supertext perspective. Um, this presentation might help you think of more ways to get more work from project managers, expose you to some helpful documents. Um, it might also just get on your nerves, but you know that's what I'm here for. So. First, let's meet Sylvia. She's a, a new freelancer at Supertext, and she happens to share a name with no fewer than four Supertexters, including more than 50% of the Italian team. <laughs> so how did she get here? Well, Sylvia thought she could use some more work. One of the main agencies she worked with was bought up by another agency, and she realized they were no longer paying on time, or seemingly ever. So she found about, about Supertext on the Pro's Blue Board um, and saw that they had a good rating, and decided to create a profile. And what do you know, Supertext also was looking for someone like her, someone with talent, experience, and creativity. But you know, Sylvia started losing her patience as she created her profile. There were just so many questions. Supertex was asking for things she didn't have or had never heard of, like proof of self-employment. Also, a post-editing certificate. Uh, with her other client, she just had to submit a CV and do some test translations. So she figured she would just upload her CV here. Anyway, it had all her information in it. A vendor manager at Supertext saw her profile after she'd submitted and thought, wow, that's a pretty impressive CV. But she didn't upload her degree certificates or post-editing certificate, so they had to send a follow-up email to her before adding her to the pool. Well, this seems like a good opportunity to give you some insight into why Supertext needs the things it asks for. We're an ISO certified agency, which means we need to have processes in place to ensure we meet certain standards. We get audited every year and need to show exactly how we track things. So right now we have four ISO certifications, uh, three of which are particularly relevant for freelancers. First, we've got the ISO uh, 17100, which covers translation services. According to this standard, all of, our all of the translators we work with need to have a degree in translation, a degree in another subject, plus two years experience, or at least five years experience. Since anyone can write whatever they want in a CV, it's important for us to be able to show we have proof of their study program if the ISO auditor asks. That's also why references are also helpful even if I personally find references basically useless. Now we have ISO 18587 for post-editing of machine translation. For this standard, we need to ensure that any freelancer offering post-editing has completed some kind of certification. Luckily, we can get away with the Trados uh, PE certificate, which is free and relatively straightforward. Um, however, we are working towards making a custom Supertext post-editing certificate. Finally, we are ISO 9000 certified, which means we need to have a proper quality management system in place. In practice, this means rating freelancers internally and ensuring we send feedback to freelancers. And then beyond that, translators will generally need to have a recent version of Trados if they work with us. That's because most of our clients have tra translation memories to keep their client language consistent, and those memories are usually saved on a Trados group share server. I'm sure you all have nightmares about group share. <laughs> <laughs> to, be 
To access a server, you need a Trados license. As for the proof of self-employment, that's something we need for financial audits, I think. You might have to ask Florian exactly <laughs> what that is. Um, so while the head of our vendor management team, Alex, will be the first to tell you how German she is, uh, we all ask for these, we ask for all these documents not because we love bureaucracy. These certifications help us sell ourselves to clients and get more work. So let's get back to Sylvia. She sent in her degree certificates after being asked by vendor management and finally had her profile approved. But then, nothing. After all that effort completing a profile and collecting documents, she went weeks without getting a job. Meanwhile, Supertex really wanted to try her out on a job, but it was financial report season and everything that was coming in was about yearly revenues. Sylvia was a marketing specialist, which we love, but sending her a 10,000 word report didn't seem like the right fit. And anyway, there's always a bit of risk involved uh, sending work to a new freelancer. So finally, a 500 word blog post came in, which was the perfect job for Sylvia. Sylvia was really happy to get the work. She really wanted to do a good job, so she spent extra long on it, rereading everything she wrote, tweaking here and there. And while Sylvia was working hard, the project manager at Supertext was holding their breath. They hoped Sylvia would accept the job they sent quickly. It really starts to pile up when you have dozens of jobs that need to be placed, and it's easy to miss something when you're waiting for freelancers to respond. When Sylvia did accept, and she did accept quickly, bless her heart, the PM started thinking, I hope she reads the instructions and the style guide and that she uses the term base and the TM and that she understands group share and of course that she writes well and delivers on time and well, you get the picture. There are just so many things to keep track of to keep our tech super and when clients complain, the project managers are the first to get an earful. So yeah, I'm coming back to that point about accepting quickly. <laughs> uh, project managers at Supertext are each managing dozens of jobs a day and are constantly interrupted by new requests, questions from freelancers, target files that can't be created, and the like. For context, uh, we managed 200,000 jobs last year, so that's a lot of coordination. Some agencies automatically send jobs to large pools from the beginning, and whoever accepts the job first uh, is the one who takes it. So we'll sometimes resort to this, but in general, we try to send jobs to just the right person and wait to see if they can take it before offering it to someone else. And some of these orders need to, need to be translated into 15 different languages. In a case like that, it can trip up your entire day if you're waiting to see if those jobs get taken. However, do keep in mind that you should only accept jobs if you really have the time to do a super job. If you reject a job quickly, the project manager will know to find someone else straight away. And speaking of things that take time, Another tip for me would be to read. I mean, you all became translators and copywriters because you love to read, right? <laughs> um, I know, and I know all those different documents and bits of information can make your eyes glaze over. It's happened to me. Uh, and you can almost definitely, you'll almost definitely come across stuff that isn't relevant. But I can't tell you how often it becomes apparent that someone hasn't actually read the briefing. Briefings can tell you who the target audience, uh, whether or not there are character limits or phrases to avoid, so they're really important. And don't forget the documents on the info portal either, which is where you'll find relevant style guides and other inf important information about SEO, subtitling, and proofreading PDFs. These aren't just fun extras, they are ways for us to streamline our processes and make sure we're delivering consistent quality. And definitely don't forget to read emails and to read them to the end. I'm the first to admit email can be a drag, but no one seems to answer the phone these days. And we have Sylvia again. She did a super job on that first order, and so the PMs have been sending her more and more work. 
But one day she gets a group share job that doesn't open properly. Everything should be set up correctly. She's worked on group share jobs before, but she just got this error message saying she doesn't have permission to work on a job. So she writes to the PM. Well, the super text PM luckily has a template saying, please try closing and reopening Trados that they send out multiple times a day. Yes, sometimes the server is down or you could be having trouble with the API token. Our group share guide has been updated to be more clear. But in most cases, uh, closing and reopening Trados will solve the issue. Also, in general, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with Trados before you start working with us. But then, tragedy strikes. Sylvia opens her email to find critical feedback on a translation. She panics. She worked so hard on that translation, and it seems like she overlooked something in the briefing. Oh gosh, she thinks, is this the end of my relationship with Supertext? At Supertext, though, we want to give feedback as much as possible, even for translations of good quality. It's one of the ways we've tried to set ourselves apart from other agencies. Sure, we'll send feedback if we're disappointed, but we'll also send feedback if you've missed some small thing in the style guide. And if, even if you have an off day, it doesn't mean you're out of the pool if you implement the feedback. Sometimes feedback discussions can devolve into an endless back and forth, which just sucks time for everyone. And plenty of stuff, most stuff even, is subjective or just client preference. So feel free to disagree with someone's assessment or even send a response or justification, uh, but keep in mind that project managers and language specialists are managing dozens of jobs a day, so it might fall on deaf ears. <laughs> then there's more bad news. Sylvia finally rejects a job. She's a bit worried what the project manager will think when she presses that scary, impersonal red rejection button, so instead she sends them a polite email. But here's the thing. Sure, it's much better to write an email saying you can't accept a job rather than not writing anything, but the problem is project managers and language specialists sometimes have to pass on jobs to other people. For example, our project managers in LA will often send uh, jobs to freelancers before handing the orders over to language specialists in Europe. So if you've just clicked reply to an email rather than rejecting a job in the system, the project manager will get the email, but not the language specialist in Europe. Um, so the language specialist won't know that you can't actually take it. This is what it actually looks like on the admin side um, of, the, of the Supertext website if somebody hasn't accepted the system. We just see the word offered, um, and sure, after a certain amount of time, we'll take an unaccepted job as a no, but it can waste a lot of time when you're managing so many orders. All right, after six months of working with Supertex, Sylvia finally has a hard-earned vacation. She's set up her out-of-office message and is off to Tenerife for three weeks. Meanwhile, a, a project manager in LA has sent out a job to Sylvia at the end of the day to pass off to the European office. But when the European PM opens the job and sees that it isn't in progress yet, she wonders, huh, why hasn't Sylvia accepted yet? I hope she's all right. You see, they didn't get that automatic reply. So you can tell us when you'll be available by going to the availability tab in the freelancer page and enter the dates when you'll be out. So then we'll be able to see in our system when you're away. Things have been chugging along. Sylvia just got a job uh, where it seems like part of a sentence is missing. So she adds a comment in the project stating as much before delivery. At Supertext, a PM has just opened the project after it was reviewed to finalize everything for the client. Then they notice the comment about half a sentence missing. The deadline is fast approaching and they know the client wants to publish ASAP. If they'd heard earlier from Sylvia, they could have asked the client before delivery, but as it stands, they may have to send through an extra order. It isn't always easy to tell when to flag something to a client and when not to, even for project managers and language specialists. 
We expect freelancers to do their own research on things like tricky terminology, but occasionally information will come up in the source text that is just incorrect or something key to understanding a sentence is missing. In that case, it's great if the translator lets us know as quickly as possible via email. It's something that may affect other languages as well, not to mention parts of the text, other parts of the text. Uh, small issues like typos or misspellings can just be flagged in comments. And be sure to use the language of the source text and client-friendly language when you write comments. Otherwise, language specialists and project managers need to rewrite all of them. And speaking of comments, uh, Sylvia has come across something else that requires a comment, a sentence that needs to be changed in a PDF proofreading job. So she adds a sticky note since that's what she's always done for past clients. But guess what? Supertext has a guide on how to make changes in PDFs and it actually advises against sticky notes in most cases. That's because it isn't always clear what sticky notes are referring to. That guide is uploaded to the freelancer info portal along with a lot of other useful information. So let's take a look at an example. The first sentence begins with, given that there are multiple approaches to editing PDFs. The editor wants to change multiple to several, so they add a sticky note saying several over the word multiple. Pretty easy to figure out what to do, right? Well, what if the person implementing the text doesn't even speak English? A lot of the time, the people doing desktop publishing and creating layouts don't speak the language of the text, and even if they do, they might not have any background knowledge on what the text is about. So if you didn't speak English, would you immediately assume that the word multiple had to be replaced? Or might you think the word several just needed to be inserted without deleting anything? Um, that's why we prefer the designated markup tools in Adobe. There are also specific functions for deleting, replacing, and inserting, so it's clear to the graphic designer what they have to do. And what's more, using the right markup tools means that graphic designers can automatically import those changes into InDesign files, which is much less time consuming and prone to error than adding each change individually. Uh, on the same note, long questions from proofreaders are likely to be ignored <laughs> by graphic designers. So remember, the person doing the layout usually isn't the person who wrote the text. You should, of course, flag things that are unclear, but the best approach is to make a, a suggestion based on your best knowledge rather than providing too many options or leaving things ambiguous or open to interpretation. Uh, and keep comments to a minimum and uh, don't share your personal opinion in a comment if possible. <laughs> Sylvia then started to expand her skill set. After taking a plain language course, she figured she could start taking on some plain language jobs from Supertext. So she wrote to the last language specialist who had sent her a job to tell her to add it to her services. Since vendor management manages all general requests, the language specialist forwarded the, forwarded the request to them. Sylvia had another general question. She realized she was getting a lot of dry IT texts and wanted to get more marketing jobs, if possible. She wasn't sure who to write to, so she wrote to the head of the Italian team, who then forwarded the request to vendor management. Sylvia then decided she wanted to provide Supertext with an hourly rate for jobs that couldn't be billed by the word, like transcriptions. Not sure who to write to, she sent an email to the info account. Head PM Jenny was monitoring the info account that day and forwarded the email to vendor management. After being told over and over again to reach out to vendor management with questions, Sylvia knew who to talk to when she had a question about when her invoice would be paid. Where did she? Well, questions about invoices should ideally be sent to the billing department who manage invoices. I know it's a bit confusing, so let me break things down. 
So if you have a question about a specific job, for example, a client has listed their number of employees inconsistently and you want to know what the correct number is, then ask the project manager on the job. So this is the picture you see at the top of the job page. Our vendor management team is responsible for recruiting freelancers and keeping their profiles up to date. This means that if you have any general questions, especially about changes you want to make to your profile, then these are the people you should reach out to. Uh, let's say you're about to go on maternity leave, write to vendor management. If you have someone you'd like to recommend, vendor man management will also be happy to hear from you. Invoicing questions, so questions about specific invoices, should always be sent to the billing department. Project managers, language specialists, and vendor managers can see if an invoice has been paid or not, but they have no influence over when it gets paid. So they pass along any emails about invoices directly to the billing department anyway. Um, as for troubleshooting issues or questions about terminology, ideally try finding a solution yourself before reaching out to someone at Supertext. Uh, most of the time the project manager will have to look up the solution themselves anyway. Look, we work in a tough industry where things are always changing and people approach things differently. Everyone has a different notion of what a transcreation is, of what proofreading should include, but even if freelancers and project managers aren't always on the same page, it doesn't mean that either side is wrong. There are misunderstandings even in the strongest partnerships, it's just a matter of making your needs heard. So even if you feel attacked by this presentation, I hope you don't, <laughs> um, it doesn't mean we don't like working with you, we just want to give you our perspective. So with that, I'd like to open the door to any questions. Uh, do you tell us who actually um, is involved in answering those emails from vendor management? Is that the project managers or sales? So we have our vendor management team who also set up the entire convention. So that's Juliana, Alex, uh, Al Alex and Lexi, two Alexandras. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't see where. I actually, don't see it where Alex is. Is she? Yeah. I sh okay, I hid hidden by the pillar. Um, but yeah, so they they. They are the vendor management team, and those are the three people who will respond to your requests. You said something earlier about the language of the comments, so do they always have to be in the source language of the, the mm -hmm. text we're translating, the yeah. comments that we leave? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say most of the time it should be. Um, it, it sort of depends. Um, I think if you get it, most of our clients are based in Switzerland and Germany, so usually they, those are, that's the language that they'll want the comments to be in. Um, but like for example, with proofreading jobs where there's just, um, the client has, uh, it's just one language anyway, then you, you, the comments should be the same language as whatever the text is in. Um, I would say if it's unclear, then maybe you can just ask the, the project manager which language it should be in. But, but in the most case, I would say German or whatever language the source text is. Yes? Hang on, hang on, hang on. If you want I have a detailed question. I mm -hmm. do re-lecturing, and quite often I notice mistakes in the source language. Yes. Now, if there are little mistakes in the source language, I make a flag or I make mm -hmm. a comment, of course, on the on the target language. But I must be honest, if there are too many, I don't because it's too time consuming. Mm -hmm. So what is your suggestion? Yeah. That's a really good uh, that's a really good point. I think if you are noticing that there are a lot of issues with the source text. Um, even before delivery, send an email to the project manager to say there are a lot of errors in the source text. Uh, I would recommend getting the source text proofread or corrected um, before uh, doing the translation. Um, because, I mean, yeah, I think in that situation, it is an, a scenario where the project manager might say, okay, let's 
edit this before even doing the translation. So in that case, I would also maybe flag as earlier uh, to the project manager rather than with comments at the end. But as I don't do the translations, mm -hmm. I only make the re-lecture. Uh, ah, yeah. uh, There will be not the time, yeah. because of the of the deadline, mm. to send it to the project manager or to the language manager. Yeah. Wait for the feedback. Yeah. Wait for the text. Usually, these are uh, typing mistakes or mm. uh, errors in numbers which are not consistent within mm -hmm. the, the same document. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it is still the job of a proofreader to, to correct any errors that are in the text, even if there are a lot of them. Um, I mean, in that case, you, ca you still can reach out to the project manager to say, hey, this took more time than it should have. Um, I think it, it's important also um, that we have an overview of which kind of clients and which kind of projects take more time. Um, but it's um, when we pass the job off to the client, it ne the any errors need to be corrected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the situation, or what, what what's your guys' preferred way of handling things? Do I have if I'm doing a big long text, as I say, three thousand words or whatever, and I've got a dozen questions about mm -hmm. um, abbreviations, or mm -hmm. what does this phrase mean, or this what this and the other? The way I do it is I like, I just have a, an Excel file. Mm -hmm with the questions, a suggestion, if I have a suggestion, mm. and then send it off. But obviously, with deadlines being what they are, sometimes that happens on the same afternoon that I'm due to send the job. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys have a, a preferred way of handling that? Or? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I would say that we don't really have a specific preferred way, but I do think it's good to have sort of an approach like what you do, where you collect all the questions and send them uh, at the same time. Um, I d like ideally before the deadline, but um, yeah, I know that that isn't always possible as well. But at the very least, um, if you send it um, at the same time as delivery, if it's a translation, then there's time during the proofreading phase uh, for those questions to be checked. Um, so yeah, I would try like exactly like you do, just kind of collect it all in one place and send them at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just interrupt me. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I do if I notice uh, mistakes in the TM or in the term base? Oh. When it's very, oh. what I <laughs> usually do is when it's really a bad mistake, I write it to the language manager, mm -hmm. but I never know if he will read the email. Mm. It's, they, we, sh we do read the email. <laughs> For the most part, <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. I think I think just writing to the the project manager or ling language ma manager specialist is the is the best you can do. Um, and like we we do read those emails, um, and hopefully someone will correct it. When I see those, I do correct it. But yeah, <laughs> we have time for one more question. I don't work a lot for you, but I never get any feedback, be it good or not oh, okay. good. Are yeah. you still happy with me, but you just don't try to me, or do uh, I do something wrong? Yeah. Uh, which, uh, which languages do you translate? Mostly, mostly German into German. French. German into French, okay. Um, well, I can just say that our French team is very busy, so maybe that's why you haven't <laughs> gotten as much feedback. Um, I think if, you know, um, yeah, it, I think it's just, with the French team in particular, they are the, m the, the busiest team. So um, I think probably that for, for French, there's less feedback being sent just because the team is so busy. But we're kind of trying to work on a system to get uh, people to send more feedback out, so. Okay, but yeah. no news is good news then. No news is good cool. news. That <laughs> Okay. Oh, sorry. All, All right. right. Just um, hand it over. Oh. <laughs>
Thank you, Francis.